A 38-year-old female has a big problem with a dental implant. Check out the full surgery and the surprising reason for her trouble today on The Open Result. Welcome to The Open Reduction, your channel covering all topics oral and maxillofacial surgery. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton, and today we're treating a badly infected dental implant. This patient is a 38-year-old female who had two implants placed at an outside office at sites 30 and 31, the mandibular molars. She was okay at first, but she gradually developed pain and a bad taste associated with the implant in the back. She didn't get any answers, so she went to a new dentist who took a radiograph and noticed this. There is a large area of bone loss on the distal aspect of this implant, and there seems to be something within the radiolucency. On closer inspection, it appears there is a broken tooth root immediately next to this implant. Okay, so we have a 38-year-old female with a large radiolucency along the distal aspect of an implant. There also appears to be a broken tooth root within this lesion. I don't have the full story from the original provider, but the most likely scenario is this patient had tooth number 31 extracted, the distal root was left behind, a dental implant was placed, the adjacent root became infected, and the result is a chronic infection and bone loss around the implant. The prognosis on this implant is guarded at best, but I want to give it every chance for success. So the plan is to open the area, remove the suspected root, clean out the infection, evaluate the implant, and then bone graft the site. This procedure is done in the office under local anesthesia and nitrous oxide. Once the patient is numb, I make an incision along the sulcus of the implant and carry it mesially and distally. I then elevate a full thickness flap. The first thing I do is locate the suspected root. Here it is, and clearly there's a lot of inflammation around it. Now that the root is out, I use a curette to clean up all this granulation tissue. Here is the large chronic infection. I need to confirm all this is removed, so I continue to curette and rinse until I see nothing but good healthy bone. Now that I can see everything is clean, I rinse again thoroughly. We can see the entire distal aspect of this implant is exposed, and there are several threads exposed along the buccal aspect as well. The good news is the implant is immobile, so it hasn't failed yet. I graft this bone defect and carry the graft material around the buccal aspect as well.
Next, I place a collagen membrane. And finally, I close it with Vicryl sutures. This patient did very well. I saw her back in two weeks and there was no sign of a persistent infection. The pain she felt before the procedure has completely resolved. I will see her back in six months time to update the cone beam CT and evaluate the bone healing. I am hopeful that the bone will fill in and she'll be able to have this implant restored. Thanks so much for watching. Please click those like and subscribe buttons and check out my channel for lots of interesting OMFS cases like this one. Also, keep an eye on my website, theopenreduction.com, for your continuing education dental needs. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton. I'll catch you next time on The Open Reduction.